Hello. My name is Harold Rosen and I am the editor-in-chief of Hamdan Medical Journal. Today we will talk about blood, which is one of the major issues in daily medicine and especially in major surgical procedures. There is a continuous effort to improve this situation and today I'm extremely happy to have one expert here, Professor Christian Spies from Vienna University Intensive Care Unit. He will t tell us today about the latest and recent uh, progress in transfusion strategies. Hello. Yeah, well, uh, over the last years and decades, transfusion practice all over the world remains suboptimal. And uh, the cause is that uh, the indications and timing for red blood cells differs all over the world and this cannot be explained by the different type of patients or the, the underlying disease of the patients. Recently, uh, although in the last uh, 20 years we have an increased amount of research uh, and we have much more knowledge about the risk and benefits of blood transfusions, uh, the problem remains uh, the same. Uh, normally, there are uh, written guidelines in almost every hospital about the use of blood products. But interestingly, uh, the doctors, the physicians are unaware of these guidelines. And this is also due to the fact that uh, normally you have not a special trigger in every patient. It's not every patient is different and every underlying disease is different and also every pathophysiology. Uh, the first step uh, to get uh, a strategy in this dilemma was uh, there were three investigational prospective studies done in the last decades in the States, in the United States and in Europe and they compared a restrictive uh, infusion strategy against the liberal. Liberal means the so-called 10-30 rule. That means to infuse, you infuse blood with hemoglobin level of less than 10 grams per deciliter or a hematocrit of 30. And restrictive is the transfusion trigger uh, sticks at a uh, hematocrit about 24, 25 and a hemoglobin level of 8. And they compared in these uh, two cohorts the outcome and interestingly there was no difference. Although in the liberal group almost 100%, exactly 97% of the patients were transfused whereas in the other group only 40%. Yeah, that's very interesting. But what are your personal recommendations at your unit for this issue? Well, uh, the new strategy in this issue is patient blood management. Patient blood management is a strategy that sticks on three points. Number one, to improve preoperatively uh, the hematopoiesis. As you know, in our population, uh, in our older, uh, our getting older population, uh, about 50% uh, of patients over 70 have preoperative anemia due to iron deficiency, a deficiency. And there are now, now drugs under the way where you can treat with one infusion over 20 minutes this uh, uh, iron deficiency preoperatively. Second, uh, below and second very important key point is to reduce intraoperative blood loss. Firstly, by optimizing uh, the surgical operation, keyword is minimal invasive surgery, and also to treat uh, coagulation abnormalities. And thirdly, also to retransfuse in the first three hours, you can retransfuse autologous blood of the patient. 
And thirdly, we have to wait postoperatively on the transfusion trigger because the transfusion trigger is very individual. And this concept, this blood management concept, has also been proven in uh, various studies and had also a great endorsement by the um, World Health Organization. Dr. Spies, thank you very much. We really appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thank you.